everybody, this is Jeff Peterson, and this is the Interstate of Music podcast. And with me today, like right in front of me, which is not common nowadays. Oh, I'm, I'm so sick of the Zoom. I mean, right. I'll do it, and it's really convenient, but this yeah. is really nice to have you. That The fact that you're actually local enough to, to take the trip in, we appreciate it. Carlos Adames is here from RBI. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's yeah, my pleasure. Th this is... Um, this is fun to do from our stage and kind of what we've built out here as a, a production facility for up and coming artists. So um, I, I want you to kind of let me know first, you're sitting here, what do you think about this? Beautiful place. You guys did a really good job with the whole design. It, I was completely surprised, so. That's awesome. It's, it's, it's just, it's great to hear from like first impressions, first walk in like, yeah. I mean, we're in a business park. Yes. And then you walk into this venue and it's just like, I don't get it, but I'm, I'm cool no, with it. No, it's amazing. It looks, <laughs> I mean, anybody that gets a chance to visit is going to be surprised. So. so, Carlos, you work for, right now you work for RBI. Yes. And what do you do, what do you, exactly do you do for them? Well, I wear many hats in the company like everybody yep. does. Um, and I'm in charge of all the sales for Latin America. And I'm doing all the digital marketing. And as well, a little bit of e-commerce, like on Amazon and stuff like that. Sure. And sometimes help with artist relations as well. So, all based out of Wisconsin for you? Yes. yes. How long have you lived in Wisconsin? Uh, about 10 years, 10 to 11 years. Why Wisconsin? Oh, love brought people to, <laughs> you know, takes it's, you everywhere. It, it, it is not, it's, I'll tell you one thing. It's easy to get in and out of the airport too. Yes. It is convenient yes. in yes. that way versus all the traffic and, and all the rest of it. So it, it's great to have people understand that you can base yourself out of a, a small, smaller to mid-sized city sure. in the Midwest and do national business and work from, yes. from a home base yes. and, and kind of pick where you live because of, of the things that you consider mm -hmm. as you know, values to your your own personal life and, mm -hmm. and, and all the rest of it. So you are, how do you differentiate the difference of the U.S. market versus the international markets that you work for? How different is it for you to kind of keep your finger on the pulse of those types of markets? Because is it a huge variance? Yeah, it is. It is very different. Um, first of all, the cultures are completely different. The consumption cultures are completely different. Uh, the power of acquisition for instruments and gear, it's uh, significant. So that puts us into always thinking of different methods to approach the customers and the market itself. And also you have to keep in consideration the political situations and the economy on each country that sure. changes constantly and that fluctuates completely the market, so it's very interesting. And I would, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm a pretty large thinker because of, of what we do as a business, but sometimes I, I don't know that I would have thought about the, you know, the political you know, situations mm -hmm. and the rest of it mm -hmm. and how that dominoes and plays yeah. into some of the strategies totally. involved. Um, how, how much of being at RBI comes from you being a musician and how much does that play into it? versus your knowledge in business, e-commerce, the digital content side of things. Where does that play for you? I mean, are you, are you a musician that plays? Sure, well, I'm originally first, I'm a musician. I'm a professional musician, touring, uh, uh, recording session musician. But uh, I came on board to Toka first as an artist. And after that, I started to show my skills and yep. I got hired to to work for the company. Um, I also have a, a, a degree in marketing. So I studied music and I studied Real marketing. Real renaissance, man. <laughs> well, you, you, gotta do, you gotta do different things nowadays. You, know, you gotta be the, your own marketing person, your own business uh, how much, dealer. How much did that, like, how much did it take for you to go from professional musician mm -hmm to thinking that you're still going to be able to hold on to that mm -hmm. while still working for manufacturers and um, that aspect of the business. Did you, were you concerned at all that it was going to affect your passion? 
No, I, I think the coolest thing about RBI is that it gives you this flexibility to perform and to be a musician and also to do your work in the best way possible. So it's, it's, it has this really good culture of, uh, of friendship and, and, and collaboration. So it's, it's a really good company for that. And, and, that's, and that's something, you know, everybody, everybody looks for that kind of a fit for them, that, that right. balance between right. their passions, their life, their work. Um, and there's, there's a lot of companies that are really good at it, but the majority of them just aren't. You know, sure. it's, it's they, they, their sales are up, their sales are down, and their, mm -hmm. the mood of the company right. you know, is a roller coaster based on that solely. Right. So yes, they might say, um, oh no, we care about you being a musician or this mm -hmm. and that, but then all of a sudden business starts to slide a little bit. Right. And then all of a sudden it's like, we don't care as much about right. that anymore because yeah. we've got to focus on this and this is our company. Yes. To, to have a company that can stay you know, true to mm -hmm. you know, caring about the people at the company is, is a huge shout out to RBI as far as, sure. as, far as that. And, yeah. and we've felt that about the culture as a, as a company that works with them and, and handles those brands. Mm -hmm. We feel that on our side too, from from RBI. Yeah. So um, credit to credit to everybody that that has found a way to keep that um, being sure. important. Yes. Some of the some of the products that you're most excited about that have been around for a long time, but you know still have this energy about them. Um, what are some of those those brands and products that are just you still love and everybody loves that you know people should know about? Well, uh, I, I like everything. Uh, everything is very unique in its own way, uh, and it kind of targets you and your emotions differently. I love Toka because I'm a percussionist, I'm a drummer, but I also play guitar, so the acquisition of Silvertone guitars towards RBI for me was huge because yep. that means that you are in front of a legendary brand that it's an iconic symbol of rock and roll. Yep. And, uh, and then you get these new innovations that are coming along, uh, like new pedals, new guitars, you know, and so it, that kind of brings you a lot of excitement when you're working with them, but also as a performer, so. And it's, how much, it's great. you talked about you dabble a little bit with you know, artist relations in, in yeah. some cases. Um, how much of that connectivity to the musicians, to other musicians that are using your product, whether you're handling the artist relations portion of it, but having them have their pro your products in their hands and communicating with them with feedback mm -hmm. and information, how much of that do you work with and how much of that helps you innovate to where, where the, the brands and products are going? Well, that's very important. Uh, the connection that the brand has or the company as a whole has with artists it's something we take care uh, we take seriously yeah. you know we we really appreciate and listen to every artist's voice um, their opinions and having a first-hand experience input always is going to give you the best knowledge and the most practical information in order to develop real uh, instruments, right. right? That you're gonna use every day. Because um, it's a huge investment it is. for a manufacturer right. to take the time to innovate yes. and all that R&D that goes into it. Right. But then that next level of commitment of producing the product and then marketing it and branding it out to the consumers to let, it, let them know that it even exists, Right. it's expensive. It, it, yeah, everything is expensive. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> um, I, I, when the, the cool thing for me is that not necessarily I'm, I, I try to assist with artist relations when the artist relations manager is not available. Yeah. And for me, that creates a really cool uh, connection with artists yep. that maybe I didn't know or maybe I didn't have such a constant communication with. Uh, and it builds new relationships, which is wonderful. Right. Uh, also helped me understand my work and my other roles, and then I can approach other artists in a different way too. You know? Well, and, and I just talked to Jake Summers, who's the touring drummer for Luke Combs, yep. who you mentioned to me is also a Toka. He's a Toka artist. Toka yes. artist, and 
it, it's one of those things where one of the things that you know I found in, that was important to him mm -hmm. was the relationship with the manufacturer, the people. Yes. Not just the product. The product is yeah. one aspect of it, but that relationship and partnership and that connection that he felt with, with the people from those brands mm -hmm. that he represents is so important to him. Yeah. And so I think what you're talking about um, is key. I think it's not just about wanting your product to be on stage in front of millions of, right. of viewers seeing that, oh, look, he's playing it, so it's good. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's... Yeah, that's part of it, but they're, you know, for them to want to play your mm -hmm. products because of the quality of your product, the sound of your product, where it fits with them as musicians, that's one thing. Right. But then to really represent the brand because of the people, that's another right. thing. That's where the, the magic happens with artist relations, I would say. Yeah, I mean, at, for example, at Toka, we have a slogan, a slogan that it's almost familiar, we're family. And the, the most important thing for us is that our products have a soul. So if we connect with people by making them feel what I have always believed is the most important thing, yeah. the feeling of belonging, uh, then you have a mutual communication, mutual respect, uh, and, and you can feel like you're part of the same family or company. It's in a world where we, where we sit there and we make product and we sell it for this and we've got to make this much profit so that we can keep things going. Mm -hmm. To have you say, like that's, to me, that's the stuff that's like goosebump stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. that's what makes the music industry right. what it is. And that's what's making manufacturers that are understanding that connection. Mm -hmm. And this is an industry of a lot of people that do have right. a lot of feeling and passion about um, caring beyond the instrument, mm -hmm. um, and that is that is something that's been fun about getting to be part of this industry, and and we've been welcomed, you know, mm -hmm. with open arms from so many, and it's and it's been fun. Where did you start as a musician for yourself? Like, was it per, was it percussion first? Uh, no, I started with piano, uh, but it's a funny story. I started when I was five. So I started with piano, then my teacher left. So I had no more piano teacher. And acquiring a piano was way too expensive. So I moved to guitar and I started going to school and then I found love and passion for drums and I just kept going with, with drums and I continued to follow with guitar as my second instrument. But uh, yeah, my whole life has been all about percussion and drums in general. So when, when you were playing guitar, mm -hmm. did you feel as though, what's the difference in the connection you have with guitar versus percussion, like personally? Like what is um, the difference in being part of a, a you know, on stage or, you, you know, the, the, the song itself, mm -hmm. for you to play it as a guitarist, for you personally, mm -hmm. versus playing it as a percussionist? What is that, that difference for you? Well, I'm not a guitarist. I took guitar to understand harmony, melody, to know so how to write. So it was a tool write. for you to be a better musician. You, right, yes. So uh, just so that, and also like in my whole career, I had to uh, study a, a harmonical uh, instrument and I didn't want to go with piano. I was like, that's too much work. I'd, this time to do it yep. when I was in college and it was, guitar was so much easier for me because I already knew it yeah. uh, and I could get a guitar anywhere. <laughs> so. yeah. And you can carry, you can transport it anywhere right. and, and you can just pick it up at mm -hmm. any time for a, yeah. you know, 10 minutes in between studying or something. It's, right. it's really a convenient instrument. Yeah, but to, to answer, uh, guitar for me, I it still see it more as a rhythmical instrument that I can't take away percussions from anything that I do. So regardless, I play guitar, I'm still gonna play like as a, it's a drum, uh, but now we're using chords or, yep. you know. So I try to translate that when I'm in a stage, but I feel maybe because of practice, uh, I have a way easier way to communicate my ideas when I use drums. So. What is, so you've been, in the manufacturing 
side of, of the music industry mm -hmm. for how long? About three years now. Okay, so I, I don't want to say just three years. Sure. But three years, especially the three years we've just come off of. Yeah. Interesting three years to, yeah. you know, to be a part to be a part of yes. your timing was either amazing or it was like oh my gosh what, what's been going on very interesting yeah. um but in that three-year time frame what are some of the things that you feel that you've learned differently and mm -hmm. picked up differently about the industry that a musician just might not have expected mm -hmm. or thought or like how has it helped you grow Big, you, you get to understand uh, the appreciation of the work that's being done behind the scenes that you don't see when you only see a product. You know, you see a product, but you don't know how much it took for that product to be developed and, yeah. and what it takes to be on stores and uh, what it takes for dealers and distributors to get that product to you as a, as a musician, you know. Uh, and also the side of being a musician and being endorsed, uh, how easy it is, what, what it really means to be an endorse, uh, endorsing company from the other side. Right. You know? So I've been endorsed my whole life, fortunately, by different companies, but I've never seen how it is in the other side and what you think about uh, process, um, yeah, the organization, logistics, what it really means for a company to be uh, endorsing artists, you know. All right, so here's a weird question. It just popped into my head. But I have a feeling you've just got so many instruments that have come in and out of your life or that you still own and still have. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go on an extreme scenario, okay? Mm -hmm. You've got a bug out of your home, like you've got three minutes, and you've got a suitcase with all your you know, personal important things, mm -hmm. and you've got one arm to grab one instrument, <laughs> and it's the only one you're gonna have, and you're gonna have that one for the rest of your life. Yeah. What's the one instrument that you're gonna grab that you feel is going to keep your passion and drive as a musician alive? Um, that's easy, a cajon. Really? Yeah. And so why? Um, personally, uh, I'm a, I'm a percussionist and not a conguero, which okay. many people confuse. Um, it's a very specific, very narrow path to be one or the other, you know. And, and I have found uh, that a cajon is the most versatile instrument I can have. So I can cover almost any style of music with a cajon. It's, it's amazing you say that because and not a lot of fan, like music mm -hmm. fans that go to see artists play or mm -hmm. this and that really get to experience mm -hmm. a percussionist using a cone. I right. mean, it's, it's, right. it really isn't one. You don't see it on stage a ton or this and sure. that unless somebody like breaks down a specific song and it's kind of cool in a boutique setting. Yeah. It is, in our green room, we have one. Mm -hmm. And it is every single time musicians come in and out, Mm -hmm. Whether they're actually a percussionist or not, mm -hmm. they're sitting on it and they are having a blast. Like, it, it, so there's an, there's an energy yeah. to that instrument. And I think the, the variety that you talk about, because every single person that's played it yeah. is playing it completely different. And it sounds sure. completely different yeah. with everybody that's playing it. Totally. So that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I do think... Um, it needs to find its way on the stages more. Yeah, yeah, it should. <laughs> it, right? I mean, I, I think it, yeah. it's, it, it is also an instrument that you can't help, somebody that knows how to play it, you mm -hmm. can't help but connect and pay attention to everything they're doing yeah. and where they're hitting to get all the different sounds from it. It is a, it immediately immerses somebody into the song and what that musician mm -hmm. is doing. It yeah. needs to find the stage more often for for, for, yeah. for large shows. Even. Sure, yes. Yes, more touring comp bands should bring Cajon. They really should. Like, yeah, it gives you a different that, make voice. Make that happen. This is on you. You've got to make, force them if you have to. 
they'll they'll buy into it eventually. I'll try it. I'll try. So what is what's new and what's coming, um, and that you're excited about? You know, for 2023, even 2024, um, as far as products, innovation, um, or just a rebranding of something that didn't have its fair shake the last mm -hmm. two years, and you're yeah. kind of like rebranding. What are some of the things that are just really important to you and fun? Um, well, f from Toka? From whatever. Okay, well, uh, specifically from Toka, we are rebranding a little bit of some products mm -hmm. uh, that needed attention, and uh, switching the, the gears in, in how they are being developed and how we want to present them to the public uh, with much better quality or, or, or just simply uh, newer uh, finishes and more appealing uh, characteristics. But right now we're working with uh, a recent development that we did, which is a Simpatico system. Okay. And this is a whole line of drums that are, have inter exchangeable uh, drum heads. And it's like a perfect thing for musicians, music educators, music therapists, drum circle enthusiasts, uh, you name it. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, and it's a whole new development right from home. So we're not using any other vendors that are, that are part of the drum. Everything is being designed and produced by That's us. So yeah, it was really good. It's easy to get passionate and have it feel more like it's it's yeah. it's your child that you're totally. taking from here all the way yes. up to yes. you know getting it out to the consumer and then and then to get it in, in consumers' hands to try it yes. before it goes out to market and getting their impressions on it, you know, to to feel that confidence mm -hmm. and and the pride that goes with that. Yeah, that's 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 what keeps you waking up every day to do it. Probably. Yeah, yeah. What is what's next for you? Just personally, as a musician, mm -hmm. what what are you looking to do? What have you been up to? You know, how can people like just find you as a musician? You know, sorry, RBI, but put, put an RBI off to the side <laughs> just just make, just for a second here. Yeah, Carlos, what is what are your plans as a musician? What are you looking to do? Well, right now I've been composing. So okay. this year I've been playing. I play, I'm the drummer for the Love Monkeys. Uh, it's a local band. Yep. It's very well known. Yep. Uh, for how many? 30, how, how 30 long you, years. Yeah, how long have you been doing it? Uh, me, about 10 years. Unbelievable. So, yeah, so, uh, and the band, it's so busy that I have a project on my own that's Latin jazz. Um, I have put that on the side and it has been resting, but the time that I have had to be at home and uh, work, I've been composing so that we can release a new album for Latin jazz. Uh, we release a single called Welcome to Soweto, which is very crazy counting, it was yep. seven, five, three, four, but it, interesting. So that's what it's coming for, for me, put a new album by next year. And when you're doing your album and recording, are you doing it yourself? Are you going to other artists or are you doing it here in Wisconsin? Like, mm -hmm. what is that experience like for you coming from Wisconsin where people you know, typically for recording, mm -hmm. I don't know if Milwaukee is like immediately what everybody thinks of as a place to go and record mm -hmm. albums. But so, how are you doing it? Well, I, I'm doing most of it myself, okay. and I do have artists that are friends yep. that do the collaboration with me, and they're really nice guys that are willing to do it from the distance. And I just send the tracks, and they record it, send it to me. How? How much was the switching over to the mentality of being able to do Zoom and video conferencing, how much do you think that helped the collaboration in the music industry and kind of elevated it to being a tool to be used where you can actually span out quite a bit further than always having to be in-house, like at the same place collaborating? Is it, sure. it, has it elevated collaboration, do you think? It has. Um, I think it, it not only elevated collaboration, but it kind of made us learn a completely new uh, technique 
of work and develop new techniques to communicate with people because uh, it's not easy to be in front of a camera. When, even if it's a tiny camera on a computer. Uh, and like I, I learned a lot from my wife. She, she's a, a reporter, a news anchor. And seeing that, then I was like, oh, I really appreciate what you do more. You know, yeah. it, it, it's a lot to learn. It's a lot yes. to, and when mostly like settings like these that you're doing a podcast and you're communicating, you're doing interviews, uh, how well uh, organized your thoughts have to be in order to be accurate and eloquent, you know? Right. And, and I think that that's, that's a credit to you that is caring about the experience for everybody else sure. outside of your own experience. And I, I think so many, so many people focus on what's this experience going to be like for me? Mm -hmm. What do I care about? Oh, that's not a big deal. I'll just do this. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And I think we sell ourselves short on what the output is going to be mm -hmm. if that's the way we go with our input. Right. And I, I, I think so. It's, I think that's important to kind of note that how we carry ourselves and the details that we mm -hmm. put into it all the way through, it can be casual. Yeah. But yet still at a level of quality um, that keeps the energy alive in, in the project that you're doing. And that's in everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and, um, you know, I think you, you got a lot of that when you're talking about your wife being mm -hmm. in front of the camera and, mm -hmm. and what that takes. Mm -hmm. and the and the pressure yeah. that's on you you know especially you know if you're an anchor and it's live i don't care if you've got a right. a screen prompting you with yeah, you what that next story up. is like i mean you're you've got to yeah. present yourself yes and, and it's constantly changing yes you know that information that's coming at you and i think musicians go through a lot of that as well mm -hmm. it's not just a stagnant industry it's not a stagnant thing collaborating on music and trying to put a project together right um so it's important it is so i want to thank you again for not just being part of the interstate music podcast and and but coming here in person oh yeah um My it's pleasure. been great to get to know you great for for me to have you just see what we're doing what we're all about and uh please Stay, stay close. I mean, you're close enough to stay close with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so I'm going to just expect it now. Um, and uh, I've, I've gone to a bunch of Love Monkeys oh, shows. Yeah. So I, uh, I also, like, I look at it and I go, Love Monkeys, you know, cover band for the most part. Yeah. Right? Um, I know they've, you guys have done some original stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, mixed some things in. But to be able to be the ultimate entertainers Mm -hmm. And the longevity that you've had yeah. is a credit to everybody that's on that stage mm -hmm. and that's come in and out of being part of the Love Monkeys. And, but the core, that has, has just been there for yeah. a decade um, and being out there. And as many shows as you, you guys do through the summer months yeah. is a lot. A lot. Yeah. I mean, off the charts. And to still keep that energy up for the fans that are watching. Mm -hmm. um, again, it, it shows who you are as a musician about the fan, but then now on that manufacturing side <laughs> about the consumer and the, and the artists. Yeah. Um, and being and and going out there and playing. I unbelievable what you've kind of turned yourself into through all these <laughs> years, right? And and having all those experiences. So thank you again for for being part of the podcast. Um, and uh, and come back and visit. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is a wonderful space. Congratulations, and I look forward to coming back. Awesome. This has been the Interstate of Music Podcast. I'm Jeff Peterson, and uh, until next time, Peterson out. <laughs>